Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention in the uh, in the first video is there's two key parts to setting up a rank and file system where the ranks in your alliance actually mean something. Those two key players are one myself and number two, the recruitment officer. So from the top down, I'm working on the top down with it. The recruitment officer, as far as ranks actually meaning anything, I'm working from the top down by finding people that are in charge of every different thing the Alliance would ever need, finding rank fours that aren't just a rank. So people are in the Alliance thinking, oh, this person's a higher rank than me. They outrank me. Oh no, 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 no. All of our rank fours eventually are gonna be so are going to be people that actually do something other than being just members. You know, they're either a main rally setter or they do something, right? So I'm working from the top down to initiate and implement the rank and file system. But the recruitment officer is going to be working from the bottom up. So he's going to be recruiting the people that are trials. He's going to be determining, you know, if they're if they can immediately be a new member or maybe they got some history on the server. Some people don't like them. They have to be in a trial phase for two or three days or something. We need to keep an eye on them and be hawkish about any misbehavior they might do. You know, we got some we got several people that are KOS to the entire server by, you know, the the coordinators that run the server, right? So they've done a bunch of bad behavior in the past or they've hit tiles, they've hit relics, they've hit resource tiles, like they're KOS forever until they pay back a certain whatever. Maybe they got some history and they're gonna be a trial. This is all gonna be determined by the recruitment officer. He's gonna determine if they're rank one immediately or they're rank two immediately, how long they're a new member before they become a full member of the Alliance, which for most people will be the best rank that you'd want to be. So those are the, those are the two key players in implementing a rank and file system. One, the leader identifies the people in charge of certain positions. Now trying to do this, you might get some tells for people saying stuff like, Oh, if you think I'd be good for this position, I would like to have an officer position. Well, what does that mean? If I give you the position and you're shit at it, then it's my fucking fault? I don't think so. No, you need to be genuinely interested in the position. Just like anything in life, what I've found as a grown-ass man, people get good at things, two, two things. Either what they're forced to do because of the financial position they're stuck in in life or what they're interested in doing. That's that's usually the majority. People get good at something they're interested in doing. So if someone just wants, if you put out your transitioning, like I put out, I'm transitioning, you know, our alliance into officers. They're not, we're not going to call them ranks anymore. You're either going to be a trial, a new member, a full member, or an officer that has a duty, a duty officer, an alliance duty officer. So I've gotten tells from several people like, if you think I'd be good at this position, give me this position. Like multiple people have sent me that tells. What that tells me immediately in their very first message is that they just want to be a rank four. They don't even have any idea nor care about being an officer that actually does something. They just aren't an R4 already, and they want to be promoted to rank four. So those are the two key important things about implementing a rank and file system within your alliance so that the ranks actually mean something and people value the position that they're in because, you know, the rank don't mean nothing. If it doesn't mean nothing to be a rank four, then why are you a rank four? It's a good question.